Hello, welcome to TCM. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Ben Mankiewicz, Mario Cantone. Mario has been here all month, uh, every Sunday night, programming a double feature of scary movies. Just gave us Psycho, and we yep. wrap it up now. Your final, your tenth of ten final movies. Final movie is Brian De Palma's Blowout, which I love this movie. You know, I, I recently watched um, Dress to Kill mm -hmm. and Blowout back to back, and I love Dress to Kill, but I have to say Blowout, for me, holds up even more. I love how the performances in it are kind of, except for Travolta, are kind of big. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nancy Allen's just so committed to it, and she's great in it. She's, I love her. I, have, oh, I love I Nancy I think she's Allen. so talented. And she's reunited here with Travolta. They were both in, in Carrie together. Who are you? I'm Jack Terry. Who are you? Sally. Sally. Nice to meet you, Sally. Right. And De Palma and Nancy supposedly she wasn't going to do this movie because he didn't want people to think that she just was working because of him. But Travolta really wanted her, and then it, yeah, it and just she's, happened. And yeah. she's great. Yeah, and nobody now thinks that because Nancy Allen's work obviously stands uh, on its own. Yeah. yeah. And Dennis Franz is—it's a very big character. He's so good. Yep. He's so good in this. And Lithgow is the greatest villain. He's scary. He's dead-eyed. He's really wonderful in this. Yeah, guy. when when he gets into conversations with the people who hired him, and the people who hired him are criminals, yeah. right? They're bad guys. But you can feel their frustration as they start to recognize who have we hired? Have we hired? What the hell have we done? Yes, because you'll, yeah. You, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah uh, really good stuff. And, and then just uh, really unlike almost any other movie other than a uh, film came out, I guess, what would it be, uh, uh, seven years earlier, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation, yeah. where sound, right, is such the key element uh, the, of, the, of the picture. Because Travolta is a movie sound man, low budget. For B you know, movies. For C movies, really, in Philadelphia. Uh, and he's out recording sounds when the event that kicks off the movie occurs. Yes, I heard the blowout, but the first sound I heard was a bang. This is kind of an echo. No, <laughs> look, I know what an echo sounds like. I'm a sound man. Travolta, beautiful, gorgeous in yeah. this, and so good, so understated, so, I don't know, he's just really subtle and wonderful in this. I think he's a wonderful actor anyway, but it, this is him at, in his prime. Yeah, so, you know, when Tarantino's Pulp Fiction comes out and a sort of a generation of Americans are reintroduced to Travolta, who had become, in the eyes of some, you know, uh, there was a little bit of a joke yeah. with Travolta. And then you see Pulp Fiction and think, oh, my God, look what, Tarantino got out of him. Look what Tarantino did. Unless you were, you know, wise enough to remember Blowout. And I'm not knocking Tarantino. He's as good no, a director as there is on the planet. But Travolta has it in him. There's no question. Yeah. I think he's... Look, I went to the movies and saw Grease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Every weekend for a month. I mean, he's... I do he's, not find that hard to believe. I did, because no. he's incredible in it. And Saturday Night Fever, which... I know this is blasphemous. It's not my favorite movie, but he's really good in it. Even Urban Cowboy, I yeah. love him in that. But this was kind of the last movie that Travolta did before he kind of became John Travolta. John Travolta. Yeah. Um, so it's worth it all the way around, but yeah. it's really worth and, it. And his character here, there's a, a, a you know a sweetness to him and an innocence to him, but also a, a drive. Oh yeah. Right. You know. And he's yeah. He doesn't. He he he's doing his best to get the job done. He's very driven in this. Yeah, you know, this is a this is a a taut political thriller uh, uh, told from the perspective of a of a movie sound man, and it really gives you some insight into the not so much insight, but it is a it, it's a unique story where uh, what we hear is more important than what we see. Yeah. And I think it's one of De Palma's best, and I, uh, I agree. And I'm a big Brian De Palma fan. I love fan. him. His vision is just always. Yeah, the uh, stunning. I, and, I quote this a lot. It's the title of Peter Bogdanovich's book about movie directors called "Who the Devil Made It," and it's a quote from Howard Hawks, who said, "Look, when you watch a picture, you ought to be able to know who the devil made it. When, when you watch a, a Brian De Palma picture, you you know Brian you De Palma. You know he made it. And, yeah. and, and, and early on, he was always criticized for, you know, stealing from Hitchcock. And it's like, look, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery. flattery and everyone gets things from somewhere, and then you make it your own. And that's exactly how he made his career, I think." We'll talk more after the movie? Yes, sir. Here it is from 1981. John Travolta, Nancy Allen, John Lithgow, a little bit of Dennis Franz mm -hmm. in Brian De Palma's Blowout.
Welcome back, Ben Mankiewicz, along with Mario Cantone, who's programmed all of our Sunday night double features here in October. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. I'm so happy to be here once again. You know, I really am. This is a dream. That's great. Just so you know. It's really great to have you here. Speaking of dreams. Yes. This is... There's been a few Brian De Palma movies before this where they end in a dream sequence of, like, Dressed to Kill. She's being murdered at the end, Nancy Allen, but it's a dream. She wakes up. Um, Carrie, same thing. It's a dream that Carrie has grabbed Amy Irving's hand and is going to pull her under. This ends with a real murder. She dies in the end. But yet, the way it's filmed with the fireworks going off and the swirling camera, it looks like a dream. It's it's a brilliant ending and such a sad ending and the way he's holding her and the camera's going around. And he deliberately misleads us until the end because we see Lithgow uh, attacking Nancy Allen and then he runs up and then he's still attacking her when Travolta comes and kills, kills Lithgow. Him. So, yeah. And then we see her lying there and in almost every movie, picks her up by the head, <coughs> she yeah. coughs and, and it's okay. But no, her, she's dead. She's gone. She's gone. She's too late. I saw this movie in a theater in 1981 at, at you know 14 years old, and what I recall most from the movie then, and it stayed with me for 40 years, was the very end of the film and him using the audio of her scream oh. in there and his 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 that. That it's moment, great. that moment, and then saying, and he uses her scream, and then he, he says, actually did yeah. it, and then he says, and then uh, the, his you know partner goes, oh, that's a good scream. He's like, yeah, that's a good, good, good yeah. scream, good it's, scream. Oh, it's really, it's a great, it's, it's a great it's movie a, it, moment. Oh. And although they mentioned the Sapruda film in this, the Kennedy Sapruda film, it's it really kind of harkens back to that with the way he puts together the animation. Yeah, we get a little rotoscoping, yep. uh, some uh, little old school animation. It's really putting it together yeah, and yeah. trying to figure out. Where the shot came from, and very Chappaquiddick. Of course, you yeah, know the yeah. accident over the bridge in the water. Um, I love the Kennedys, by the way. I, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm a, a big Kennedy. Uh, I'm a Massachusetts boy, so I, I always love the Kennedys. So, yeah. um, so uh, say about the uh, Chappaquiddick. Look, there's no question that was an accident, a terrible accident. Yeah, he dove sorry. under. He tried That's to save her. It. Yep. Then you just got to go to the police. Yeah, yeah you, you gotta, absolutely yeah, do. Yeah, like John Travolta did. He yeah. went to the police. Uh, and just, you know, but the, every part of it, the politics of it feels real. Like, right, there's a guy, he's a political threat, so we're going to set him up, we're going to take pictures, and we're going to end his political career. All of it felt sort of uh, dirty and yeah. awful, and, and, and but, but uh, entirely credible. And Nancy Allen being the hooker with the heart of gold. Yeah. I love her. And you, it is a big character. She's really doing like, I don't really think she's want to listen to that. I mean, she's doing this thing, and it's like, she's ridiculous. And then you're like, she's brilliant in this. But the reason, it really works. The reason why, because she's not just a hooker with a heart of gold. She was going to... She was to, in on it. Oh, she yeah. was in on it, right? Yeah. She was gonna, but she wasn't she in on all of it. No, no, of course right. not. In the end, she does the right thing, yeah. right? She recognizes it and she sees that John Travolta, there's a decency in him and there's obviously a decency in her, which he recognizes. But yeah, she was, you know, she was part of a, a, a scamming operation that, that set guys up. So that makes, again, that to me makes the hooker with the heart of gold part more credible yep. because she was dancing on the dark side legitimately yeah. and dennis france is just so scummy in this oh yeah that's he a... is filthy and great and another just big performance it's broad i love when an actor dares to just take that brush and paint it all with big strokes and but ground it in reality and ground it with truth and that's what they do in this mr cantone mr mankowitz it's a pleasure you know what i always say about you i don't your Hollywood royalty, why? Because you're a Mankiewicz. <laughs> well, that, that is true, yes. You're a Mankiewicz. I adore you. Thanks for being in my life, and thanks. For, I'm so happy that this, this channel, which breathes life into me every day, is, exists. And, and I hope it never goes away, because it's so needed. Sure. And you do a magnificent job, as do all your co-hosts. Mario, thank you very much. We're not going anywhere. No, you're not. But Mario and I are done for the night. Thank God. But I'm not leaving. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline Stewart is up next with Silent Sunday Night. So stick around.